The 5 O'Clock Hour is sponsored by Edward Jones Investments with financial advisor Ben Erlinson, who will navigate you through today's financial climate. Edward Jones, making sense of investing. Here's David Smoke and Paul Catalina. Carter Baines covers Oregon State in Corvallis. Senior writer and editor at beaverblitz.com at 247 and CBS Sports affiliate. And Carter joins us on Sikkim 365 Radio and 365 Sports. Carter, we've checked in with a lot of the different, uh, I guess, media that cover various schools. Not all, but about around the Pac-12 after what happened a week ago Thursday with USC and UCLA. And, and we just had a writer that covers Washington State. And I think Oregon State's kind of in that same that same dilemma about what about us? Your thoughts about what's been the reaction in Corvallis? Thanks for your time, by the way. Yeah, it's, it's a weird time where, you know, Pac-12 writers are like the story in the, in the Big 12 footprint right now. But I think that's just kind of the, the state of where we're at right now. Um, you know, as, as we see teams talk to other conferences and obviously the two L.A. schools moving out uh, to the Midwest conference area, um, but yeah, the, the the response out here, as far as you know, Oregon State's concerned, um, I think a lot of Oregon State fans are really, really concerned about how this might play out for the university. Um, you know, you hear all these rumors about the four corner schools talking to the Big Twelve and Oregon and Washington talking to the Big Ten, but you know, there's two schools that are pretty consistently left out of those rumors, and it's Oregon State and Washington State. Um, and I think you know the reasoning behind that is obviously. Oregon State and, you know, a, a farm town, a college town in, in the middle of the Willamette Valley, there's there's not a real media uh, market draw there. And if, if we're being honest, you know, Oregon State football hasn't been a powerhouse by any means the last decade. So um, there, there, there's pretty serious concern out, out here about how this impacts Oregon State and how far behind the Beavers might get left. If the Pac-12 is not saved... And, you know, of course, nobody knows where this thing is headed. Um, what do you think is the best case scenario for Oregon State? Or where do you think is the most likely scenario for them? Well, best case and most likely, I think, are two different things here. So best case, I believe, is that Oregon State is somehow able to ride on the coattails of some of the larger brands of the Pac-12 and maybe join the Big 12 or, I don't know, some sort of new look, you know, ACC. Uh, Pac-12 merger, you know, we've, we've heard about the the uh, the loose partnership that's been thrown around with the Pac-12 and ACC. So if the Pac-12 completely folds, the you know, best case is just Oregon State latching on somewhere and, and taking advantage of, you know, being around the Washingtons and Oregons of, of this conference. But I do think that, uh, unfortunately, the most likely scenario, the way everything has played out so far, is that I think Oregon State has a pretty good shot of just being left behind and maybe getting picked up by the Mountain West, um, which I, I think, th- to be honest with it would be a, a catastrophic for not only the athletic department, but the university. Just the revenue, the, the revenue impact that that would have, you know, losing close to 90% of the, the TV, um, you know, the, the media rights money that comes in from the Pac-12 joining the Mountain West. Um, that would effectively cripple the athletic department. Yeah, we, uh, we had Colton Clark, who covers Washington State, on just 30 minutes ago, and I asked him about the political structure of the state of Washington, and, and, and does that come into play or not? It has it some places. It, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, will that in Oregon become uh, something that Oregon State can latch on to as well, or would they want that to happen? I don't know that that's you know one of the, the issues on the forefront right now. I, I do know that as far as – you know, the, the state legislature goes, there have been talks that, you know, Oregon wants to push to, to keep the Oregon schools together. Um, so let's say Oregon, you know, is, is trying to get into the Big Ten. There's talk in, in the state legislature of, you know, ensuring that Oregon State is packaged along there. I don't know that that holds up. In fact, I, I doubt that it would. Um, but I know that there's, there's similar talks up north in Washington about that as well. I just don't know that that would hold much weight. And I, I think, you know, I, I don't think there's any way that that helps Oregon State get into the Big Ten. I think it might just prevent Oregon from getting in. It what, is it a, you mentioned all the things about where they are and you know projecting out like the size of the university over the next decade. You know, that's one of the things the Big Twelve. You know, some of the schools can say, "Look, look Houston and 
UCF, Cincinnati, all growing schools. Is that going to be a tough sell for Oregon State just based on the fact that they are in a rural place and kind of in, in a weird spot geographically? I think so. And I mean, even in the last, you know, 10 to 20 years, Oregon State has grown substantially. Um, a lot of that came on, you know, the the coattails of, of the football program rising to success in the early part of the 2000s. Um, but the, the trajectory that the football team has, has been on recently, you know, it, it's not a successful one. And I think that has maybe hurt the, um, the uh, you know, hurt how the university is viewed, at, at least in, in an athletic standpoint. Obviously, you know, Oregon State has a great um, athletic department for Olympic sports. Obviously, it's been a baseball powerhouse for close to two decades now. And so it does add value, but I, I just think that the perception of Oregon State out there on, on the national stage um, certainly isn't helping it when, when it comes to, you know, a, attempting to, to leverage the university brand to get into a better conference than what the Pac-10 might look like, you know, after uh, the LA schools are gone. Well, yeah, I, what you mentioned earlier about if they are – if they drop out of that TV revenue with the power fives, and of course everyone's different, the SEC and Big Ten are fine and will get only better, that, you know, it is it is kind of reality that if, in fact, they were to get out of that kind of revenue stream, it would be catastrophic. And I, I think it's kind of refreshing to hear somebody say, admit that. Yeah, I, I think the first thing that comes to mind is the coaching contracts. I mean, Jonathan Smith, makes you know, head coach of, of the football program, makes close to $4 million a year. That is exactly what a school like Boise State or San Diego State makes from its entire uh, media rights deal. You know, the Mountain West schools bring in $4 million. So you have enough money to pay your head football coach, and that is it. Um, so I, I just don't think there's anywhere near the money in the Mountain West to keep the athletic department rolling at the level that it is now. And it's unfortunate because, as I said, you know, or Oregon State has built um, a, a pretty formidable athletic department out west as far as, you know, you look at baseball, even softball recently making it the Women's College World Series. Um, all sports, you know, all, all sorts of Olympic sports have, have done well so far, and I think you lose a lot of that um, if you move down to the group of five. You know, the, the revenue and um, the budget concerns there would, I, I think you'd lose a lot of your coaches. I, I think funding for individual uh, programs would, would diminish, and um, you know, the, the recent facility upgrades that Oregon State has made for its football program, you know, you might have these great facilities, but what are you filling it with if you have no money? So let's fast forward in these uh, accelerated now media rights negotiations in this 30-day window. If I'm sure Oregon State fans and everybody who's not maybe Washington and Oregon, and I guess, you know, Stanford has so much money, they don't care what happens, but uh, doesn't, doesn't get what they want. Um are, is everybody kind of at the at the behest of Washington, Oregon for the Pac Pac Ten to stay together? I think there's yeah, I think that's very much um, you know an, an accurate representation of what's going on right now. Those are the two premier brands that are left behind after uh, UCLA and, and USC leave, and I, I think the fact that you know the Big Ten effectively denied them entrance right away as they wait for Notre Dame helps the rest of the Pac Twelve. Um, you know, as of right now, Washington and Oregon don't have a place to go outside of the Pac, uh, you know, the Pac-10, Pac-12, whatever, whatever it may be in, in two years. Um, so that helps a school like Oregon State that is, you know, holding on for dear life. And I think really just hoping that the Pac-12 remains in existence um, in, in one way or another. And I, I think with these media rights negotiations being moved up, I think best case scenario for Oregon State right now in these next 30 days is the Pac-12 finds uh, a deal that, that keeps the Pac-10, Pac-12 uh, intact for, you know, I don't know, a, a decade or however long that contract would run. Um, having some sort of stability there and ensuring that no other teams leave, that really is the only way I think that Oregon State stays uh, at, at the Power 5 level in the, the short term. How much does it kind of, and I hate to use it, but it suck – they're coming off Jonathan Smith, of course, the head coach. They're coming off their best record since he arrived four years ago. Seven and six, a little glimmer, right? And, and now all of a sudden, can this kind of just be a gut punch too? I think that's the the most bitter part about all of this is the timing. You know, Oregon State, I mentioned the other sports, but football in particular, obviously it drives the bus. And the momentum that Oregon State has built in the last four and a half going on five years now under Jonathan Smith, I mean, this program – 
it, it's night and day where it was when he took over. You know, Oregon State just made its first bowl game in eight years. Um, the the entire west side of Reeser Stadium is under construction, and it's going to be one of the the most modern, uh, you know, high tech stadiums probably west of the Mississippi when it's done in, in a year and a half or so. Um, the fact that all of this is happening right now, when Jonathan Smith has this program at its highest point since arguably I'd say 2012, it's yeah, it like you said, it sucks. It's it's really poor timing. You know, there are rivalries, and then there are some that sometimes people may not know much about. We we know Auburn, Alabama hate each other. Texas, Oklahoma is bitter. Michigan, Ohio State, whatever. And that Oregon-Oregon State rivalry is pretty bitter too, isn't it? Pretty heated? Yeah, it's, I, I would actually argue that it is. It, it could very well be the most underrated rivalry in college sports. Um, you grew up in the state of Oregon. You're either a beaver or you're a duck. There's no in-between. And I, I think if you know, if you see that disappear, that's devastating for, for sports fans in Oregon. That is, that's the Super Bowl for, for Oregon, you know. Professional sports aren't huge out here. You've got the NBA and, and MLS, but that's it. Outside of that, college sports rules all. Uh, and, and that rivalry for, for so long has meant so much to, um, to sports fans in the state. And I, I think if, if Oregon State and Oregon were to, to go separate ways in their next conference, you know, wherever they end up, um, losing that rivalry, you know that that would be that would be heartbreaking for for this state. 125, I think it is 125 times, and it's really close. Mm-hmm. Oregon has a slight edge. I mean, it's 18 or 19 games, whatever, but not much. Uh, when you see some of those that have gone on that long, it's like 83, 40 or something like that. Hey, Carter, thank you. Good luck, man. Uh, we have the scene, the conference that we cover quite a bit, the Big 12. We've seen them go through the uh, struggles of what is next, including a year ago. And uh, I, I know sometimes other conferences go, ah, <laughs> good luck. Uh, we really, I hope everything works out for Oregon State, the Pac-12, or whoever is left of whatever they do, that, that they continue to be able to sustain it to play at the highest level. Thank you. Hey, if the Big 12 can do it, I, I certainly hope that the Pac-12 can, can follow suit and, and stay afloat after it. You know, their two biggest brands leave, too. Yep. So, appreciate it. Thanks for Thank having you. me, guys. Carter Baines, BeaverBlitz.com, and with us on Sikkim 365 Radio, 365 Sports.